Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For this tutorial, I'm going to do something new that I have not done before. And I honestly don't know if I've ever seen it before. But what this is, is a hidden image cake design. I'm going to show you how I do it on my YouTube channel. But this might be an Instagram really cool kind of design because you're going to see the background on how it's done. So let's get started. What I'm going to do first is make my bark colored buttercream. And I'm going to use it a little trick that you may have already heard of before. Um, to get the depth of the chocolate or the brown, I don't want to overload it with too much brown. The deep colored um, buttercreams can require that you add a lot of uh, food coloring at times. What I did was just add some food coloring to part of the buttercream, put it in the microwave for about a minute until it melts. And when you melt that butter, it brings out the depth of the color. Now you could do your whole batch of buttercream melted if you want to, but I try to avoid that if I can. I, I suppose it doesn't really matter because when you mix it in with your remaining buttercream, it actually kind of melts it anyways. So as I'm thinking this through, you could go ahead and just melt the whole thing. And it would be a, a much deeper color with way less food coloring. Since this is not a chocolate buttercream, that's another way that you can um, kind of cheat the system is by making a chocolate buttercream with melted chocolate because um, that tastes way better than food coloring, right? But I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to waste the ingredients for just a demo cake. So that's what I did. And here's the depth I got out of that brown. Now you're going to cover it up with some saran wrap and have it touching the surface, kind of like when you're making pudding so you don't get a crusted over surface. Put in the refrigerator for about an hour until it's firmed up again. And then it's perfect. And also any air bubbles that you might have had in your buttercream will be gone at that point too. So that's another, another bonus. So this image, I just Googled um, royalty-free fall tree images and came up with some options. And this was my favorite one. And I just printed it on some edible paper, not wafer paper, but the actual paper. Um, what's it called? Can't remember what it's called now, but it's the thicker paper. I just printed it with edible ink on that paper. I cut it to size and then I'm going to back it. I always back my edible images. I feel like it just kind of prevents it from bubbling. See how sometimes any condensation can make your image bubble a little bit. This prevents that from happening. If you're going to be putting it back in your refrigerator, which I always do, I would just do the extra step. And I just attach the image with some piping gel. That's it. Make sure that you've got all your air bubbles removed. And I always, I always like to brush over it with some shortening. It kind of um, brightens up the image a little bit, makes it a little shiny, and also helps you to make sure that you're removing any air bubbles and any piping gel that might have accidentally got on the front of your image, it blends it in and it disappears. And then we're just going to cut off our excess pieces. Now to attach the image, I am attaching it to my already buttercreamed and chilled cake with some shortening. You could use some more piping gel if you want to, or even water, that's fine. But I always like to work with the shortening because I can move things without ruining the whole cake if I don't get it where I want it. I just placed it on the cake and now I'm just making sure that it's stuck on real good and any air bubbles are removed. Now the top, I'm gonna just kinda make it look like the cut end of a tree trunk. I could have done multiple colors of brown. I could have gone back in and painted it, but I honestly, I just didn't feel the need this time. I um, wasn't trying to make it look too realistic on the top. So I just did an, an, about a quarter, in, quarter of an inch thick layer on top, smoothed in the sides, and pulled it into the top. And then I'm just going to use my spatula to um, make the centrifugal, is that the right word, rings, just by using my offset spatula. I was kind of going for the look of the center of a... Of, um, a cut off tree, but it's kind of the idea of it. And then I'm just using some parchment paper and tracing out the pattern that I want. I didn't want a straight edge. 
I wanted it to be kind of wavy, kind of more natural. Keeping in mind that you want to make sure that your buttercream will cover up the outside edge of your image. Make sure that your parchment paper is smaller than that section. And I've just brushed some shortening on the parchment paper and just stuck it to the image where I wanted it. And that's going to protect your image. Now here is where this, if, if you wanted to do this really cool, and you can do it with anything, obviously, but if you were doing this for an order and you didn't want them to know that only the person that purchased it would know that um, you have an image under there, it would be good for a gender reveal also, wouldn't it? Oh, idea. You could cut that parchment paper shorter so it kind of blends in a little bit. And then I just piped a faux tree buttercream on the outside edge of uh, the outside of the cake. I'm just piping it on up and down. Now do a nice generous layer. You can try to go for as realistic as you want to on this cake. Um, I just kind of saved time and just kind of did the idea, like, like I said before, just kind of the abstract idea of it where you know what it is, but it doesn't have to look completely real. And then I kind of added some more on the bottom to be kind of like where your roots grow out from the tree, just for some added interest. And I'm going to just smooth it down just a little bit. You probably don't have to do that because you're going to have lots of texture on this. That's just me being a perfectionist again. I can't help myself. <laughs> and then I just used a, um, I went in first with a rubber spatula to give it some overall texture. Keep this as random as you can. And then I'm using the offset spatula to go ahead and leave marks of bark also. I kind of did a mixture of the both. I wanted it to be layered texture. And don't forget your little roots. I know this is a very straight up and down tree trunk. Like I said, you could go ahead and add some bulk around the bottom, even on the top if you want to. And just mess with it and get it, get it the way you like it. It's very subjective. Now I know I'm showing a lot of details on this cake because um, I didn't have a whole lot of footage because it didn't take me a whole long lot of time to do and I didn't have to go through and edit it quicker, which is kind of nice. And then you just pull your parchment paper off and then you have your image. This could be done in so many different ways. Who knows, I might do another version at some point. And then I just wanted to use some edible moss that I had made before, and I kept it. I had extra. I will add a link onto the video on where I show you how to make your edible moss. I didn't have to make it, so there's no footage to show you that I had it in the freezer. It freezes really, really well. And I'm just attaching it, attaching it with some more buttercream. This is where I'm adding my details, is with the moss. And I made some mushrooms also. Right here we are. Now, don't, don't ask me where that footage is. Can't find it. I had to make some room on my cards, on my hard drives, and I think I accidentally deleted it. But all I did was I rolled it out a thicker, about um, a half an inch thick, quarter of an inch, a half an inch thick, thick um, rolled out fondant, put some saran wrap over the top, and I used some circle cutters and pushed down on top of the saran wrap. And what that does is it gives you a domed circle. And then I used my fingers to pinch around the edge just to kind of make them look a little bit more natural. And then I just used some, some um, orange luster dust on the top to add a little bit of extra color. And then I just am going in and kind of slicing out sections to place those into with a little buttercream underneath to anchor them in place. You can add more on the back. I just kind of went for the top two side, the, you know, the two different sides. So I hope you like this, guys. This is really fun. I know I've been doing a lot of weddings because it, it is wedding season, but I wanted to do something a little bit more fun and fallish, and I hope you liked it. I hope this gives you some inspiration, and if you do come up with some cool ideas and do it, please share with me on Instagram. I'd love to see everything you come up with.